Hello, first once again I want to point out that these are just opinions, they're my silly opinions, and if after you finish watching you think I'm a stupid silly pants and don't know what I'm talking about and you're gonna do it your way, well that's very mean, but also you're allowed, that's fine. Game design is complicated, there's no one right way to do things, this is just my lens, my experiences from playing a lot of amateur games. Yeah, you get it. Mistake number two, bad tutorialization. Now don't feel too bad about this one, even AAA games struggle to get this right, and there are videos all over YouTube talking about tutorialization in games, which games people think do it well, which ones we think do it badly, etc. Frankly, getting the rules and controls of your game into the brains and hands of your players is an insanely complex art form by itself. It's interwoven into every aspect of your game's design, to the point where I kind of hate using the word tutorial in the noun sense, it feels often so reductive. Like people see a tutorial as just being this distinct thing. This bit of the game you play through that shows you how to play and then it's just done. Which is why I'm using the term tutorialization. So with such a complex thing to talk about, I'm going to try to focus here on mistakes, or really just the one big mistake made by beginner, and honestly more than just beginner developers, specifically solo developers too, and the trap they often fall into when trying, or sometimes not really trying, to teach people how to play their game. So most newer developers do understand the basic need for players to know how to play their game. It's intellectually a simple problem to feel like you understand. You made the game, the player did not they do not know what you know, so you need to tell them how to play. Sounds simple, but it's actually an incredibly deep, complex, and profound issue. You never get to play your game as a new player. Sure, you might discover emergent things and consequences and techniques about your game as you make it, that's part of the creative process for sure, but you made the control scheme, you never didn't know how to use it. You literally conceived it. You never have to work out how to solve your levels or puzzles, how your inventory or stats system System works. You never have to learn anything about your game from the same context and path walked to that context that your players have. For a newer designer especially, it's very easy to make a tutorial that ticks the boxes on paper. You'll make one of those how to play screens that's like not even usually something the player has to read and is just hidden in options or something, and it will just cover all the game mechanics in detailed paragraphs of text, maybe even over multiple pages. Essentially a manual. It covers everything. Problem solved. Players can go here, and if they ever complain that something was unclear, you can just say it's in the how to play screen, sorted. And the reason you might think this is fine is because you as the developer are blind to it. You never have to experience how awful this is as a new player. A new player that doesn't frankly have a reason to care yet, who has to just sit and read some text without any context, no game feel, no nothing, just mechanics described in text. And I hope the writing is at least good because words themselves are a whole art of communication. Then assuming it does read well and makes sense in spite of all that, they've got to try and remember it all when they're actually playing the game. A lot of the time if the player wants to refer back to it, they've got to exit all the way back out to the main menu. Extremely simple games can get away with this stuff, but if the game is that simple, you've got to ask yourself if there is not a way you could still skip this screen and have a simple, seamless tutorial section at the beginning of actual gameplay. So there's a lot of reasons why these screens are not good. Good, but a developer can think they're good because on paper they do the job and they're not able to feel this part of the experience by themselves. They might know from reflecting on their own experiences in games like these that they are still blind to the experience of their own unique game no matter what. So maybe you don't do that kind of thing. You have a proper in-game tutorial that is so elegant. You even avoid all use of text in your game because you heard that constraints breed creativity or something. You use subtle light cues and colors, visualization and subtle animation to delicately pull the strings of your player's mind and seamlessly transfer a full understanding of your intuitive and beautiful mechanics to their mind. You saw a YouTube video once about how well Mega Man X teaches you as you play or how Super Metroid's level design forces you to learn mechanics. Oh my god, look, they don't even they don't even tell you the button to press just to, for the morph ball. They just have this section here and you, you have to use your new ability to continue to play and the, the tunnel is noticeably smaller and the only way out, oh, it's just so clear and intuitive. Oh my god, so sleek, so elegant. I can do that too. I can be a master level designer like all the greats before me. Behold! And then huge swathes of your players will never reach your masterwork tutorial in the first place because the path that leads there involves them having to fall down a hole, for instance, and it turns out that players associate that with death in platform games, so they give up because they can't open a door they're not supposed to be able to open yet, and didn't consider going downward to be an option. Oops! So the reason all this is important, and why tutorialization is such a minefield for new developers, well, 
for developers, full stop, is that you as a designer are always blind to how well your game teaches others. You're just blind. You have your own experiences and your own brain, but that's it. And you don't even really know how your own brain would react to your own game because you can never play it without knowing what you know. Once you think you truly understand how to teach your game to players is exactly when you will start making the biggest mistakes. So what do we do about this? Well, there's a lot we can do. Like I said, this is a huge aspect of game design. It's kind of a whole gestalt. It's greater than the sum of its parts. One small thing I will say to developers is to not be afraid of explicitness when things aren't working. If your clever level design tricks aren't working for everyone, and they won't, just put some text on the screen. Do something. Personally, I prefer a clunky tutorialization with loads of text and explicit instruction to a failed or non-existent one that was trying to be too clever for its own good. Maybe that's just me. But as I said, I don't really want to get into specifics here. The biggest problem we have is your blind spot as a game designer. And the only true way, the only way to see some amount of your blind spot here is to put your game in front of people. Test your game. This goes for all of game design, but tutorialization above all else. Get someone who is not you and see how they learn, well, if they learn, how they respond to and play your game. You can't tell them anything, you can't help them out. You just have to watch and see what they get from the game and just just from the game itself. And not just if they work out how to play, but how they felt about it. Did your tutorialization cause friction? Was it unpleasant or confusing? And one person is not nearly enough. You need as many as you possibly can. Have people play your game. I don't just mean your loved ones, close friends, etc. Although you should also do that for sure. I mean put it in front of people who don't know or care about you or your game. As many as you possibly can. It's not easy, I won't lie. Just sourcing the people to play in a space where you can watch them play is difficult but it is essential. You have to do this. It's just absolutely the only way. Now obviously also do watch all the content that's out there on tutorialization in games because there's infinity of it out there. It's all great and it will teach you the specifics of what to try and what to look out for. Do use your own experiences of other games. Do use your instincts and learn as much as you can. The overarching point in this video is not to tell you how to do tutorials right because that's, well, frankly let me know if you do work that out. The point is to show you or remind you of your blindness to how anyone but you will interact with, experience, and learn your game. So much can go wrong, so much you've never even imagined can go wrong, and it's so easy to think you've nailed it and to be blind to your blindness. So as you make more games, and especially as you get more confident and more experienced, always always remember your blindness. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. It's tricky trying to think about what can help new developers getting started with such a broad, complex topic, but I do think awareness is always the beginning, and always remembering that you just don't know what your game is like to experience will go a long way in helping you learn and grow. I, I hope so, anyway. Let me know what you think. Thank you to my patrons, and thank you, yes, you, Darren. Your, your name maybe isn't Darren, but if it is, dang, I just got you good. Hold that. Anyway, thanks, Darren, for watching until the end, and I'll catch you all next time.